while that I haven't published videos. Extremely busy schedule. At the same time, I'm living in Canada, so hunting, fishing, and lots of other stuff keeping me busy, so less time over the weekend. But I made a little bit of commitment into this channel, and I decided to publish at least one video every 15 days. So my plan is to publish one video first and 15th of every month. And I'm going to stick to that. Uh, today, we are going to talk about SharePoint Hub, something that is somehow new in SharePoint Online. And lots of people talk about it. And at the same time, for lots of clients that I'm working with, it's just a new topic that they think, OK, it's cool to go through it. Uh, Microsoft is pushing at the same time to bring the client into this. So today I'm going to show you what Hub is, how it works, what value it adds, and how is it going to help our client? And is it actually the right way to go? Let's start with the most important question. What is a Hub? Let me compare it with the other components in SharePoint. If you remember, when we group files or data items, we group them and we place them in a list or library. Same way, when we have a couple of lists and libraries, we put them in a SharePoint site, or we call them SharePoint website. A couple of websites, when they put together, they form a site collection. And that was it. Introduction of the hub added one more layer on the top of it. So now, if you want to group some site collections, we assign them to a hub. So what is so special about the hub? Using hub, you can create a shared navigation for different site collections. We used to do the same thing using manage navigation, but that was a big hassle. Usually, we used to create one site collection with the manage navigation and with that manage navigation stored in the term store. And we could use that term set as a navigation source for another site. That was quite a big hassle, usually tons of work, and it was not user friendly at all. So you had to really understand the concept. With using a hub, anybody with a very minimum knowledge and just using the user interface inside the hub can go there and change and manage navigation for a whole lot of site collections that they are part of the same hub. The other thing is that it dramatically simplifies search administration. So when it comes to search, all the site collections that you are part of the hub, they are automatically scoped in one search area. So basically means when you are in one hub, when you search by default, it searches all the site collections in that hub. Of course, you can extend it using SharePoint search capabilities, but typically that's the scenario. Before that, you could search the web, you could search the site collection, and now your search scope is automatically, without any administration or configuration, is assigned to everything that is part of the hub. And you know what, I really don't care anymore about it, because if these two things work as promised, I'm more than happy to recommend and use Hub everywhere. So let's get into it and see how it works. Now, there are a couple of steps that you need to follow to create a Hub. The first thing is that you need to create a SharePoint site. This SharePoint site can be any site. It doesn't need to be a SharePoint modern site. So any old site can actually be promoted to a SharePoint Hub. So let's see how we can create a SharePoint Hub and add site collections into it. The first thing that you need to do, you need to create a SharePoint site. After that, you need to promote the site that you just created to a SharePoint hub, and you have to use PowerShell. Till today that I'm talking to you, there is no UI to do that. So you have to use SharePoint Management Shell, run the PowerShell commands, and promote it to become a SharePoint hub. After that, you need to configure the hub navigation. So whatever the link and whatever the navigation that you want to put it in the hub, just add it through the UI and it's a very simple process. Once it is done, you need to go to the other site collections and add them to the hub. So let's start the work and see actually how we can do that. Step one, create a SharePoint site. So I go to my SharePoint admin site. 
To create a modern site, you need to go to the preview for the modern SharePoint administration. And we click on active sites and I create a new site. And it can be team site or communication site, it doesn't really matter. I pick team site and I call it Hub 101. So it says it's available. I just click on next. It asks me if I want to add an additional owner. I really don't. And I just wait till finish is enabled. I click on finish and the new site is created. The site is created. I just go to another tab and I log into the website and you see it's just a simple SharePoint site. Step one, complete. Now I need to promote the site to a SharePoint hub using PowerShell. To do that, I need to open SharePoint Management Shell. Always run it as administrator. We connect to SharePoint Online. So connect SPO service URL HTTP column slash slash missing advice, which is the tenancy name admin you have to connect to the admin site dot sharepoint.com and okay one more thing https enter and password and i'm connected to the server now it's time to register the hub register spo hub site and again we need to specify the site which is going to be the url of the site https column slash slash missing advice dot sharepoint dot com slash sites slash hub 101 and i press enter it asks me for the principal, which basically you need to specify a group that only that group is authorized to add or remove people to the add or remove site collections to that hub. But at the moment we just skip it. And the site that we have here is actually promoted to a hub. Let's go to the site and see what's happening inside it. Now inside this hub, if I just press enter now and I refresh it, you see a little bit of difference here. You see this navigation on the top of the page, it says Hub 001. And if I click on this settings now, I also have something called Hub Site Setting, apart from the site information and site setting that I have. So if I click on Hub Site Setting, it gives me the chance to add an icon to the hub, which will be displayed on the top of the hub. And also I can specify the Hub Site Navigation name, which is the link that brings people from every site collection that you are part of this hub to the hub, which is the root of all those site collections. So I just say hub zero, hub 101. I just put a space there and I just click on save. So technically I can make the changes in the settings of the hub. So now, as you can see, the link has changed here. So I successfully created my hub. Let's go to the next step which is configure the hub navigation. Now, if I want to configure the hub navigation, I need to have some other sites that I want to have the same navigation. If I go back to this browser, I have site collection A that I created here. I have site collection B, I have site collection C, and each one of them, they are separate site collections. So on the top of the hub, I want to add menu items that are actually being shared by all the sites that I'm gonna eventually add to the hub. So if I go to site A, I make a copy of this URL, I go back to the hub and I say add link. As you can see, so simply the item can be added. So I just paste the address here, display name. I can say site collection A and I click OK. And I click save. Site collection A is added. I can add another one right under it, I can click and I can just paste the item here. This time it's gonna be site collection B and the same way site collection B and I say, okay. 
and for site C I also want to add it here but a little bit different this time when I say site collection C and but this time I want to say let's show the site collection C as the sub item for the site collection B. So I just click OK first and then I click on this menu item here and I say make it a sublink. So as you can see now the links have two levels. If I click on save on the top of it you can say sites you can see site collection A, site collection B and under site collection B I have site collection C or whatever that I have. As you can see those sites are not even part of the hub but I just added the links here. So if I go to this hub at the moment and if I just refresh the page this site doesn't even have a clue that it's referenced from the hub which is fine. We are not done yet. So let's go to the next stage which is add other site collections to the hub. There are two ways that you can add other site collections to the hub. One way is I go to the site collection A and in the site collection A I can go to the site information and now that I have a hub you can see this site uh, this hub site association drop down so if I click on it it shows me hub 101 which I just created and if I click save you can see the menu items that I had in the hub are actually appearing on this member site. This is very easy to add sites to the hub. So apparently we are done with this last step but the typical way that we usually add sites to the hub is through the PowerShell. So I go back to my PowerShell and this time I want to use PowerShell to associate site collection B to the hub. To do that I in the PowerShell once I'm connected to my SharePoint server I would say add SPO hub association. I need to specify the site that I want to connect which is going to be one of these URLs And also I need to specify the hub site which is going to be the URL of the hub. Let me get it from here. Uh, the only thing is that site collection A is already associated. I use site collection B and this should do the job. If I press enter it completes the job and now if I go to site collection B and I refresh the page you will see the site collection B also shares the same thing and I will do the same thing with site collection C. And site collection C is also part of the same hub now. And here is the experience that I will have as a user. So if I go to the hub I can see site collection A site collection A and it's sharing the same navigation B and C to each one of them that I go I still see the same navigation. So I created a shared navigation for a good number of site collections that are totally separate with totally different levels of administration. Okay the next thing that I want to talk to you about is uh, limitations. The first thing is that you cannot promote a publishing site to a hub. Okay, that's a little bit of problem. Uh, technically, if you create a publishing site, an old publishing site, and you want to promote it to a hub using Register Hub, it actually works. So technically, it says it is promoted. But as soon as you get into the menu administration or top navigation or global navigation administration, that will mess up with the administration of the hub. So I tried different ways, but it was so much of hassle that I said you know what let's avoid it and let's stick to the modern site navigation. The other thing is that you cannot add a hub site to a hub. So hubs are not nested. You have one bucket called hub A for example and any site that you add to it it's just a flat structure. If you really want to uh, present a nested structure the only solution that you have is to present it as nested structure 
under the hub navigation exactly the same way that we did it here so basically uh, site collection b and c are completely independent but site collection c in the navigation just shows under site collection b also keep in mind that one site can be associated only to one hub site so if i have site collection a which is associated to hub 101 i cannot associate the site collection a to another hub at the same time and the last thing is that you have the maximum of 50 hub sites per tenancy so i cannot really imagine even the biggest organization wants to create 50 hubs but keep in mind that there is a limit for it okay that was it i hope you enjoyed the video if you're not already a subscriber please push that subscribe button and stay tuned till the next video thank you for watching